Guys, when it comes to migraines, you know, finding a treatment that works for you is very welcome relief. But understanding your triggers is also key. And internist Dr. Carrie Peterson is joining us now with what you need to know. Carrie, good to see you. Good morning. All right, so let's talk about, first of all, migraines in general. What, what should people know the difference between just a regular old headache, whether it's tension headache or sinus headache, and a migraine? What makes migraines so different? Well, migraines, first of all, are much more severe. They tend to be a throbbing in nature. They're typically on one side of the head, and they're associated with nausea and sensitivity to light and sound. And you can even get what's called an aura, which is a warning symptom, like a flashing light that you're going to have one. Whereas a tension headache typically is both sides across the forehead, like a squeezing pressure. You don't get the nausea or light sensitivity, and it's less severe and disabling. All right, so if you have a migraine, or you, what you think is a migraine, could it be that there's something else, something serious going on that maybe you don't realize? Well, anyone who suspects they have a migraine must see their doctor for a proper diagnosis, but there are many other causes of headaches, some of which are not serious, such as tension migraines, and some that are much more serious, such as a brain tumor, God forbid. But in general, if you're seeing your physician, they will do a thorough physical, take a history, potentially order some imaging studies to give you a proper diagnosis. Right, so potentially order some. Not everybody is going to get like no. a CAT scan or an MRI or something like no, that. No, each person really needs to be individualized. It depends on whether they have any neurologic symptoms or some other symptoms that don't fit with the picture of a migraine. Oh, okay, so let's talk about the triggers because it's so important for people who have migraines to understand there are certain things that they're doing, maybe eating, That's that right. can cause triggers. What are some of the common triggers? There are so many of them. There are several foods, including alcohol and MSG. G, stress, depression, anxiety can trigger them. We weather changes, like mm -hmm. today's barometric pressure changes with the snow, mm -hmm. that can trigger them. Um, even certain odors like smoke, perfumes, and chemicals can trigger them. And in women, very often their menstrual cycle can trigger it as well, and that's not something you can control. Right, but there are so many things that you can control, so yeah. identifying your trigger is key because you get it's on top key. of it. Absolutely. Let's talk about treatment because there's so many. There's new treatments, there are old treatments, old that's standbys. Right. What, what do you find works in your practice? Well, even if you try to avoid your triggers, you can still get a migraine, and what I'll typically recommend for patients is an over-the-counter therapy like Excedrin migraine and in fact I've teamed up with the makers of Excedrin migraine because I think it's so important to educate patients about the importance of understanding their triggers mm -hmm. but for each person the treatment plan really needs to be individualized because everybody is different so you really need to talk to your doctor to tailor it for you right because it could be something specific but what about alternative remedies a lot of people sure. say you know what I don't want to take a medication I don't like medication maybe there's something else I want to do what, what have you found in that well you can try acupuncture even Botox is effective of course, as prescription medications, biofeedback is useful, even ice on the area that hurts, and sometimes just getting a good night's sleep is enough. Right. Do you, is it important, though, I always tell people, if you're going to go with any kind of alternative remedy, you should really discuss that with your doctor. Absolutely. Always discuss any treatment you're going to undergo with your physician so they can determine if that's what's necessary for you. 